Plasma membrane must allow certain substances to enter and leave a cell while preventing harmful materials from entering and essential materials from leaving. In other words, plasma membranes are selectively permeable. They allow some substances through but not others. Passive transport is a naturally occurring phenomena and does not require the cell to expend energy to accomplish the movement in, in passive Substances move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration in a process called as diffusion. A physical space in which there is a different concentration of a, sing of a single substance is said to have a concentration gradient. Diffusion is a passive process of transport. A single substance tends to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until the concentration is equal across the space. If you're familiar with diffusion of substances through the air, for example, think about some, someone opening a bottle perfume in a room filled with people. The perfume is at the highest concentration in the bottle and at, is at its lowest at the edges of the room. Transport mechanisms require the use of cells' energy, usually in the form of adenosine triphosphate. Watch this animation in the LMS. Cells move within the cell cytoplasm by diffusion, and certain materials move through the plasma membrane by diffusion. Diffusion expends no energy, rather than the rather the different concentration of materials. Uh, in different areas are a form of potential energy, and diffusion is the dissipation of that potential energy as materials move down their concentration gradient from high to low. Are influenced by temperatures, molecular size, gradient of pressure, charge and concentration, and selective permeability. In facilitated transport, also called as facilitated diffusion, materials move across the membrane with the assistance of a transmembrane protein down the concentration gradient, again from high to low concentration, without the expenditure of cellular energy. The material being transported is first attached to protein or glycoprotein receptors on the exterior surface of the plasma membrane this allows the material that is needed by the cell to be removed from the extracellular fluid. The integral proteins involved in facilitated transport are co collectively referred to as transport proteins, and they function as either channels or for the materials, or also called as carriers. Lastly, osmosis is the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane according to the concentration gradient of water across the membrane. Whereas diffusion transports material across membranes and within cells, osmosis transports only water across a membrane and the membrane limits the diffusion of solutes in the water. Osmosis is a special case of diffusion. Water, like other substances, move from an area of high concentration to one of lower concentration. Imagine a beaker with a semi-permeable membrane separating the two sides or halves. On both sides of the membrane, the water level is the same, but there are different concentrations on each side of a, of a dissolved substance or solute that cannot cross the membrane. If the volume of water is the same, but the concentration of solutes are different, there and then, then there is also a different concentration of water. The solvent on either side of the membrane. A principle of diffusion is that the molecules move around and will spread evenly through the medium if they can. However, only the material capable of getting through the membrane will diffuse through it. In this example, the solute cannot diffuse them through the membrane, but the water can. Water has a concentration gradient in this system. Therefore, water will diffuse from its concentration gradient, crossing the membrane to the side where it is less concentrated. 
This diffusion of water through the membrane osmosis will continue until the oxygen until the concentration gradient of water goes to zero. Uh, osmosis proceeds constantly in living cells. Now, tonicity describes the amount of solute in a solution. The measure of the tonicity of a solution or the total amount of solutes dissolved in a specific amount of solution is called its osmolarity. Three terms, hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic are used to relate the osmolarity of a cell to the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid that contains the cell. In a hypotonic solution, such as tap water, the extracellular fluid has a lower concentration of solutes than the fluid inside the cell, and water enters the cell. In living system, the point of reference is always the cytoplasm. So the prefix hypo means that the extracellular fluid has a lower concentration of solutes or a lower osmolarity than the, cyto than the cell cytoplasm. It also means that the extracellular fluid has a higher concentration of water than the cell. In this situation, will all water will then follow its concentration gradient and enter the cell. This may cause an animal cell to burst or lyse. In a hypertonic solution, the prefix hyper refers to extracellular fluids having a higher concentration of water um, than the cell cytoplasm. The fluid contains less water than the cell, such as seawater. Because the cell has a lower concentration of solutes, the water will leave the cell. In fact, Salute is drawing the water out of the cell. This may cause an animal cell to shrivel or crenate. In an isotonic solution, the extracellular fluid has the same osmolarity as the cell. It, uh, if, this, if this is the case, then the concentration of salutes of the cell matches that of the extracellular fluid. Hence, there will be no movement of water into or out of the cell. Blood cells in hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic solutions take on characteristic appearances, as seen here. Osmotic pressure changes the shape of red blood cells in hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic solutions. Hypertonic fluid, higher solute concentration. Hypotonic fluid, lower solute concentration. Isotonic solutions, two solutions with the same tonicity. Now, the influx of water produces turgor pressure, which stiffens the cells, walls of the plants. Now, try putting a limp celery in cold water and see how it gets to be firm over time. Endocytosis is a type of active transport that moves particles such as large molecules, parts of the cells, and even whole cells into a cell. Phagocytosis is cell eating, and phenocytosis is cell drinking. Sometimes endocytosis employs binding proteins in the plasma membrane that are specific for certain substances, and this is called as receptor-mediated endocytosis. Exocytosis is the opposite of the process discussed above in that its purpose is to expel material from the cell into the extracellular fluid. A particle enveloped in membrane fuses within the interior of the plasma membrane 